Hello. Um, macros, that's something that's part of the ICDL Advanced Spreadsheet Software Qualification. Uh, so we're going to have a look at that together. They are simple macros within the syllabus, so nothing to worry about. And it's a good way to start using them, and then you can get them, you can get them doing a lot more things uh, in, your, uh, in your work for you. So if we just have a quick look and see what, it, what it's all about. So what the video will do is it'll sort of show you what macros are. Uh, as it says here, the things that need to be done on an automatic basis. Routine really is a good word. Laborious is another word. Anything really that um, people just want to do. You can put a button on it. You can do lots of things like that so that your staff can just click a button. They don't have to write running them. Things like that. So it, it's a good little tool. Um, we put the developer tab on when you're doing the exam. The reason is the developer tab has much more access to recording, running, um, stopping, pausing, rather than uh, using the review uh, tab, which you can also do. So that's on anyway, um, and if it's not on, we'll show you how to put it on when, when you're part, part of doing your macro. So some examples here, changing page scale, adding a file name to a footer, sorting a range. So it's, it's, simple, it's simple stuff, it's one action, but it will be something that you need to know where it is before you start. And generally, as it will say in the video, you need to make sure you stop your macro before you go on to do any other tasks that they may ask you to do as part of that question. So you keep a macro and stop it when it actually ends and don't go any further with it. So this is Stephanie Tome and I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope it helps you for the exam or even something else. Thank you. Bye bye. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at running a macro just to see what it is. Now, macro is really useful um, because it just does laborious tasks that we don't tend to want to do every day. Or we can put buttons and things onto spreadsheets that people just click on and they activate a macro that we've created in the background so it makes life nice and easy for them. So just bear with me while this opens up. It seems a bit slow. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need um, is the best way to do a macro is to have the developer tab on. So you can see I've got my developer tab here. We're going to have a look at that in a moment. Before we move to that, let's have a look and see. So a macro is a sequence of commands that can be recorded, then played back when requ required. And like I said, you could do it um, through a box. You could pop a button on there. You can see you've got a print one here. You can just put it up on your quick access toolbar here in a little picture, and I'll show you how to do that. So there's lots of ways, and you can just click on these, and it goes through that process that you've recorded and saved under a macro name. So first of all, let's get that developer tab up, because the developer tab will give you a much better, clearer view of macros. You can still do macros when you're in the um, it's a view tab here. You've got your macros that a lot of people use, but we're going to stick to the developer tab. So if you go to File and then Options, and you can see on the Customize ribbon, there's your developer tab there. So that needs to be ticked on in order to, to see what we see, and you OK it through, and then it gives you the option of here. If we click in the macros on this particular file this spreadsheet you can see there are two macros in there and one's a print league and one's a sort league so what we're going to do is we're going to run one of them it's really simple it's not much to it so the sort league we're going to sort this range here by clicking in it and then clicking on the macro and running it so i'm going to find it there's the sort league there i'm going to run it it'll be very quick and you'll see that it's gone and run it so it's in descending order. Another one here, if you wanted to do it again, just so you can see for yourselves. Sort, run, really quick. Now, if you wanted to put a button on like this has for that macro, then you can use this insert here, as a little button there. You can draw it out onto the spreadsheet it activates the macros, you can click on the one you want to use on it, okay? And then you can type in something like sort. And if you wanted to, you could do the same as the other one, you could make it bold, a bit bigger, you know, whatever it is you want to do. And then that would act as a button to sort. So macros are useful, 
um, and I'll show you later how to put them on the quick access toolbar. But this is just an example. So let's just close this and let's actually have a go at doing some. So in the exam, they may ask you to record a macro. So we're going to use record a macro number two. Okay, so we have um, number two, record a macro. First thing you want to do is if it comes up is enable the content, which is the yellow bar across the top. We haven't received it, so we're fine. But if you do, um, then do that because that means there's a macro enabled on there. What we're going to do is we're going to create a macro called page underscore scale. We're going to do a macro to fit one page wide. So in other words, we don't want it coming over the page as it is here. So we're going to scale it. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure I've got the developer tab, which I have. I've got my macro group here. I'm going to have a quick look and see what page scale to fit means. So I'm going to go into my page layout and have a look around here. Um, that's not that's going to be automatic. And this one's the one I'm going to change. I'm going to leave that on automatic. So at the moment, it's on a 100% scale. Back to developer tab. So I'm going to click in my data. Um, and I'm going to go to record a macro. I'm going to give it its name, page underscore scale. And the reason for the underscore is macros like PBA doesn't have spaces between words. So use an underscore or just don't have a space. That'd be fine. It's in this workbook. Okay. It says it's already existing, so I'm going to replace it. Yes, you may not have one in there at all. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do it. Notice that now I've pressed on record, that stop recording has changed to a way I can stop the macro there. And I can also stop the macro down on the status bar at the bottom. So that becomes available once the macro starts. You could either go back to your developer tab, but remember you're jumping around a bit. I tend to just use this one down in the status bar. It's there at all times. So I'm going to go to the page layout. I'm going to do um, one wide to make sure I've got one wide. You can see that it's running itself a little bit at the moment, so it's actually doing it. it takes a minute, but it does do it, so I'm quite happy with that. It's gone one wide. And then I'm going to stop the macro. I'll go back to developer tab. Let's have a remember we call, recorded it there, but we found them in here. So I'm just going to go and have a look. There it is. It's actually sat there ready. What I'm going to try now isn't something that I'd ask you to do in the exam, but the whole point of doing macros is you can apply it to another document while both are open. So if you go back to your folder and open up the apply to fit macro, you can see that this one has got the same problem. So if I go back into my developer tab and find that macro that I recorded, it's now called the other workbook and with the page scale at the end. And if I run it, it takes a minute, I know, but it should apply it to up on the page and you can see that worked. So that's worth knowing. In the exam there, I'm just going to close that and not save it. In exam, remember that you're going to be doing um, the actual macro, and it's usually one thing. Okay, so we're going to do some different macros now, some things that you might be asked in the test. So just open up this one. You can see there's that enable content I talked about. So you can click on there. You get that a lot when you're at university, because obviously we're protecting ourselves. Macros can, use, can be used to carry viruses, so obviously people can be careful. Let's do a couple of macros. Let's do one where we can put our name in the header just to get some practice. Develop a tab, record a macro, let's call it name. Okay, I'm going to pop it into the section on the left. If you were in the exam and it was showing that we were in this view, just come out a minute, and we're in normal view, you can go to the page layout if you've been asked to put something in the header or footer. It just makes life easier rather than insert, edit, etc., and going all the way around. So I can just go back to where I was. Do you see I've messed about as well and I can still do that in a macro. It won't penalise me. I'm quite happy with that. Remember you've got your stop right at the bottom in the status bar. You're back in the developer tab. You've got the stop there. So I'm going to stop down here, come out and you can see that that's worked. Um, I'll go in and have a look. 
There it is, that's fine. Okay, this time um, I'm going to put a border around inside and out um, on the, the whole of my data. So I'm going to run a recorder macro called border. Okay, and I'm going to all of the data here. I'm going to do home, border, all borders, and then I'm going to stop my macro. And that's worked as well. Um, back into developer tab, you can see that the macro is there as well. There's the border. I'm going to do the page to fit again, like we did last time. So I'm going to go into record macro. macro. I'm going to call it to fit underscore to fit. Okay, go into my page layout and I'm going to do it one wide. Give it a second. That's a little wobbler, as it might do in the test, and then stop the macro. Now, the most common thing when people do macros in the exam is they're asked to save it as macro enabled, and they don't remember to stop the macro first. So they go on to do file, save as, give it a name. Let's say we're going to browse back into our folder where it was. You would be going to the Z drive in the test. You see the Z drive up here. And you might be asked to make it now macro enabled if it wasn't already but the thing is people sometimes um are still in the macro when they do that so you will get it incorrect if you do that so make sure you stop your macro we can go in now have a look at our all our macros that we've created they're all there so i'll see if this can work sometimes it will sometimes it won't do you remember we had the apply to fit macro uh, we used earlier just open that up again See if we can use some of these macros that we've created. So there's a, a run the border. Looks like it's running fine. Yep, it ran. Um, and then you've got the name. Sometimes headers will run, sometimes they won't. You might not do the run properly, so you can get corruptions on things as well. And we can have the to fit, let's run that. Takes a minute, not responding, but it should did still run. So you can see that those things do run, and there they are. If you want to step into one, say we had that name one, it didn't seem to run, we can step into it here. You don't have to do this in the exam. But it will usually tell you if there is a problem um, with that name, and I think it's to do with the header sub name. So if you want to close, go back into the normal, just OK and then you're back into your normal macro. I talked about putting them onto the quick access toolbar. So have a quick look at this. Now this isn't in the exam, it is in the syllabus, but I'm aware, as far as I'm aware, it's not in the exam, but it is useful. So you go to the end of your quick access toolbar and into more commands. At the very top here, drop this down and you can see all of your macros. If you click on the macros, there they are, the ones that we've created. So you could have the to fit, you can have them all actually, and you can add them all to the quick access toolbox. They're all here. Then you could click on one, and we could click on the border one, and you have a modify button. And the modify button will bring up different pictures that you could choose. I wonder if we've got something that's like um, borders, maybe something like that would be good, wouldn't it? And OK. And OK. And you can see. That now has changed into a picture. The others are still macro pictures. So back in, if you wanted to carry on, remember, quick access toolbar. They're in this drop down here, the macro. I've already put them on, so we've done it already. And we could have a to fit one, modify that. I could put a smiley face on that one. And there, if I click on it, not very good, I know, on screen, but that would be that macro. So that's macros, um, part of the syllabus. Keep your head when you do them. Have a quick look to make sure that you know where you're going before you start the macro. And everything should be fine. So remember, when you do them, you don't have to be perfect. It will still record it as you go along.